Good morning, I'm John Ianyan from the University of Michigan, and as Victor mentioned, a member of the Selection Committee for the National Academy of Medicine's Gustav O. Leinhardt Award for the Advancement of Healthcare. Since 1986, the Leinhardt Award has been presented annually by the National Academy of Medicine in honor of Gustav O. Leinhardt, who served as chairman of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's Board of Trustees for 15 years. The award recognizes individuals for outstanding achievement in improving healthcare services in the United States. It is my honor to present the prestigious Leinhardt Award to this year's recipient, Dr. Patricia Gabo. She is the former CEO of the Denver Health and Professor Emerita of Medicine at the University of Colorado. Dr. Gabo is recognized for her role as CEO in transforming Denver Health, a major public hospital safety net system into a national model for high quality and cost efficient care. She was the third woman in Denver Health's 150 year history to become CEO, a role she held for 20 years. Under her leadership, Denver Health achieved extraordinary quality outcomes and financial stability while advancing its mission to provide access to care for the most vulnerable patients and communities. During her tenure, Denver Health became recognized as the premier level one trauma system in Colorado, achieved an 80% immunization rate among low-income children, and had the lowest adjusted mortality rate among 117 academic health centers nationwide. Dr. Gabo solidified Denver Health's connection with the University of Colorado School of Medicine as one of the school's primary teaching hospitals. She also led the system to financial stability, enabling it to provide nearly $5 billion of care to the uninsured residents of Denver. Because of her expertise in safety net healthcare systems and the care of vulnerable populations, Dr. Gabo was appointed as a founding member of MACPAC, the Federal Medicaid and Children's Health Insurance Program Payment and Access Commission. She also serves on the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Board of Trustees and the Lown Institute Board of Directors. Please join me in honoring Dr. Patricia Gabo as the 2019 recipient of the Gustav O. Leinhardt Award for her impact and accomplishments in advancing healthcare. To be honored by the most prestigious group in medicine is an incredible gift. Few people earn such an honor on their own. I am not one of them. There are many people who deserve thanks and recognition. Janet Cheichels, who nominated me, those who wrote supporting letters, the committee, and the National Academy of Medicine who selected me, and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation that supported the award. I owe much to my family, my grandparents, my parents, and Hal, my husband of 48 years, who always supported me, and my children, Aaron and Tania, who embraced a working mother. I had many mentors and advocates. Sister Florence, who showed me you didn't have to change who you are to succeed. Dr. Thier and Dr. Relman, who taught me that the patient is our primary responsibility. Dr. Schreier, who said, if you don't stretch, you don't grow. I know, it seems like I didn't listen. Um, <laughs> Mayor Webb, who appointed me to lead Denver Health and all my colleagues and employees there, who every day serve those who have the least. I would not have been considered for this award without Denver Health, which is a unique institution that embodies what American healthcare can and should be. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Another round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, John, and congratulations to Patty. The next award is the Rhonda and Bernard Sonnet International Prize in Mental Health. It has been awarded annually since 1992 to individuals, groups, or organizations that have demonstrated outstanding achievement in improving mental health. Sanders' concern about the destructive effects of mental illness inspired them to establish this award. Rhonda passed away in 2018, and her husband, Bernard, passed away in 2011. But their legacy lies in the deeds of, this, of the, awards, uh, the award, award recipients. So I'd like to invite Karen Berman, chair of this year's selection committee, to stage to introduce this year's Sanders awardee. Come on up, Karen. Hello everyone, good morning. First of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate the National Academies on their marvelous adjustable podium, uh, <laughs> which actually uh, fits a person like me. Uh, as in many things, the Academies are uh, progressive and innovative. But what I'm really here for is to congratulate with you uh, today's uh, winner of the, the Rhoda and Bernard Sarnat International Prize in mental health. The list of previous recipients is beyond impressive. And this year's recipient, Dr. Daniel Weinberger, uh, is no exception. Danny is the director and CEO of the Lieber Institute for Brain Development and a professor in the departments of psychiatry, neurology, neuroscience, and genetics at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Dr. Weinberger was nominated uh, for this award by Saul Snyder, who won the Lasker Award for his discovery of the opiate receptor and his identification of the existence of naturally occurring opiate-like peptides in the brain. In his nomination letter, Dr. Snyder said, Danny has linked the best of basic science to clinical psychiatry. He fits impeccably the high standards of the Sarnat Award. Dr. Weinberger's contributions to our understanding of mental illness have been profound and archival, and he's responsible for a number of true paradigm shifts in our field. Perhaps first among these was his seminal demonstration with neuroimaging that patients with schizophrenia had measurable changes in brain structure. Um, when Dr. Weinberger's first papers came out in the late 1970s, uh, I was uh, a sweet young resident uh, at Wash U and then at UCSD. I don't know about the sweet part, but I sure was young. <laughs> and I clearly remember discussing these papers in journal clubs and with attendings, and I remember how this demonstration of measurable changes, uh, neurobiological features of schizophrenia changed everything. Uh, it really helped us to understand that this devastating disorder uh, was a brain disorder, and it changed how we conceptualized the disorder, the way we treated our patients, and the way we counseled their families. Since that time, uh, Dr. Weinberger's work has also been responsible for the renaissance in appreciating that schizophrenia has origins in early brain development, and he's been preeminent in the functional elucidation of psychiatric risk genes and their role in brain development and function. His leadership has been a major factor in transforming how clinicians, researchers, patients, their families, and the public understand mental health, not only changing the mainstream of research, but also helping, importantly, to destigmatize neuropsychiatric disorders. Friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Dr. Daniel Weinberger.
Wow, this is a very heady experience, to say the least. Um, first of all, I want to thank, thank you, Karen, for those incredible comments. I want to thank the selection committee, the Sarnoff family, for this incredible honor. Uh, just a few other thank yous. Firstly, on a more personal note, I must say it is especially humbling to me that Saul Snyder wanted to nominate me for this prestigious award, which he had previously received. Um, to have Saul's support and to walk even in a tiny fraction of his footsteps is a distinguished honor in its own right. As Kyron mentioned, I've spent most of my scientific career trying to understand how genes in the environment, risk factors for major psychiatric illnesses, particularly schizophrenia, influence the trajectory of brain development from very early in life. And to the extent that I've had any success in this, it's a cliche to say, it wouldn't have been possible without the combined efforts of a number of very talented and committed individuals, and in many cases, very good friends, who have worked with me, most of them, for well over 20 years. In fact, one of my first partners in this effort was Karen Berman. And uh, here we are, still talking science to each other 35 years on. I want to mention a few other names uh, who may not be that familiar to the National Academy of Medicine, but without their committed contributions and very critical effort, I wouldn't be standing here. So in particular, that is Joel Kleinman, Tom Hyde, Michael Egan, Terry Goldberg, Joe Calicott, Barbara Lipska, and Anand Matei. I also want to acknowledge and mention two families, the family of Connie and Steve Lieber and the family of Milton and Tamar Maltz, who had the vision and commitment to establish a new biomedical research institution at the Johns Hopkins campus called the Lieber Institute for Brain Development, devoted to understanding how genes in the environment deviate the developmental trajectory to translate into these major psychiatric conditions. And in a very short period of time, a little over eight years, they have, with, through their vision and commitment, seen the discovery of insights that have the pot real potential to change the lives of affected individuals. I also have to thank them for my exit visa from NIH, which was long overdue. Last but furthest from least, I have to thank my wife, Leslie, whose enduring and unwavering love and low maintenance approach to our life together has enabled me to pursue my scientific curiosities. Thank you very much for this great honor. So thank you, Karen, and congratulations to you, Daniel. And now please join me in welcoming Jane Henney the NAM Home Secretary and former Commissioner of FDA. One of Jane's many roles as Home Secretary is to chair the Member Award Selection Committee and she will present this year's awards. Come on up, Jane. Good morning. The Adam Yarmolinsky is given to a NAM member from a discipline outside of the health and medical services area. It's, it's recognized for distinguished service by a member who over a significant period of time has contributed in multiple ways to the mission of NAM. Gail R. Walensky, PhD, is the recipient of the 2019 Adam Yarmolinsky Medal. Gail Walensky has been an NAM member since 1989 and is an economist and senior fellow at Project Hope. We are honoring Gail today for her contributions to NAM's mission as an expert from a discipline and outside of the field of medical sciences. She served on NAM Governing Council for two terms as well as on the boards of Healthcare Services and Health Sciences Policy. She served as a member of the advisory board for NAM's Robert Wood Johnson's Health Policy Fellowships for six years, where she provided leadership and insight to the program. She was instrumental in designing the RWJF Fellows Orientation, and her mentoring have provided fellowships to create and implement health legislation in key congressional and executive branch offices. Thank you, Gail 
for your research on Medicare reform and military health care and for the service you have provided to the NAM. Thank you for honoring me with the Adam Yarmolinsky Medal. As a health economist, uh, and that only by adoption rather than by training, uh, being recognized by the National Academy of Medicine is indeed an honor. Uh, 30 years ago today, as you heard, uh, was a very special time for me since that was when I had been uh, selected and inducted uh, into the National Mad uh, Academy of Medicine. Uh, the Institute of Medicine, as it was then known. It was also a special year for me uh, because that was when I began my activities heading what is now known as the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which gave me an opportunity uh, to help the most vulnerable in our society get uh, health care services. Um, since that time uh, and the five years before that, I have also had the privilege of spending uh, a full day with the Robert Wood Johnson Health Policy Fellows, uh, sharing with them the health economics that they will need to know in order to get through their year in Washington. Uh, and it was my privilege uh, to do that again uh, this year. Um, I would like to thank uh, my husband, Robert, uh, who is sitting in the front row with me and acknowledge my brother, uh, Gary Rogan, uh, Robert has uh, made it possible for me to spend as much time as I do uh, working all of these years, uh, and without his constant support, uh, it would not have been possible. Thank you very much. The David Rawl Medal is given to an NAM member who has demonstrated distinguished leadership as a chair of a study committee or other such activities showing commitment above and beyond the usual responsibilities of the position. David A. Savitz, PhD, is the recipient of the 2019 David Rawl Medal. <clears throat> David Savitz is an NAA member and professor of epidemiology, obstetrics, gynecology, and pediatrics at Brown University. He is being recognized for distinguished leadership as a chair of a study committee. Indeed, during his 26 years of service to the NAM, he has served on more than a dozen committees and chaired five. His committees have tackled contentious scientifically challenging issues, including electromagnetic radiation, Agent Orange, and burn pit exposure among veterans, and the public health ramifications of e-cigarettes. Notably, under his leadership as chair, the Committee on Contaminated Drinking Water at Camp Lejeune, Camp Lejeune produced a report that helped inform legislation that was signed by President Obama. Thank you, David, for your leadership and commitment to the National Academies. Thanks very much. It's really uh, just an incredible honor. Uh, I should, of course, acknowledge my uh, nominators, uh, John Samet and, and Dave Eaton, uh, the selection committee, the many uh, distinguished and uh, really uh, close friends that are scientists who I've served on committees with, and uh, really the opportunity to work with the NAM staff that, that runs these operations who are so committed and, and really so talented. 
Um, I'm often asked by colleagues who have been invited to be considered for uh, serving uh, what my advice is and, and what the considerations are. And of course, I think everyone's aware that, uh, that the, these reports are quite authoritative given the prestige uh, of the Academy, uh, that it is a lot of work, uh, that is pretty well known, and of course it's a credential as a form of peer recognition. I think what's underappreciated is how much fun it is. Um, the chance to really work with distinguished scholars from across a range of disciplines, all approaching the same topic but from a different perspective is such a learning experience. And really the chance to see the almost magical process of these divergent views and backgrounds coming together into a, a synthesis that I think is as close as we can get to the truth. It uh, depended on the evidence, but I really think the process is really uh, quite elegant and an honor to uh, be a part of. So if uh, you have colleagues who are wavering or unsure whether to serve, just have them get in touch with me and I will be happy to uh, help to uh, persuade them. Um, I really, uh, again, I am so grateful and I look forward to more opportunities to, uh, to work with the Academy and have so much fun. Thank you. I want to give this next award a little build up because I think the acceptance is going to be pretty darn terrific. Um, a few years ago, in fact, several years ago, I attended a graduation of a young woman that I had babysat for when I was in medical school, and she was graduating from Spelman College in Atlanta. And I sat in the audience not knowing what was to come when they gave their honorary degrees. One of, one of the degrees went to Leotine Price, who sang her acceptance speech. So hold that in mind for the next several minutes. The Walsh McDermott Medal is presented to a member of the National Academy of Medicine in recognition of distinguished service to the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, the academies, over an extended period of time. Cato T. Lorenzen, MD, PhD, is the recipient of the 2019 Walsh McDermott Medal. Cato Lorenzen is a member of both the NAM and the NAE and is currently university professor and Albert Wilde von Dozen Distinguished Endowed Professor of Orthopedic Surgery at the University of Connecticut. Since Cato's election to the NAM in 2004, he has served on more than 20 committees, has served as chair of Section 1 on the NAM Membership Committee. And Cato is known internationally for his research in biomaterials, drug delivery, tissue engineering, nanotechnology, stem cell science, and a field he pioneered, regenerative engineering. In 2012, his work was highlighted by the National Geographic magazine in its 100 Discoveries That Have Changed Our World edition. As an engineer and practicing orthopedic surgeon, Cato has brought a unique multidisciplinary perspective and systems thinking approaches to all of the National Academy's activities that he has participated in. Please join me in congratulating Cato and thanking him for his services to the National Academies. Thank you. First, let me say, having run a number of meetings, I especially appreciate brevity of remarks on the part of recipients of awards. <laughs> but with that in mind, I would like to provide thanks to a few people. First, I want to thank Professor Robert Langer, my mentor, who taught me to be a scientist. I want to thank my many role models who, who I've had over the years 
but particularly the clinician scientists, Dr. Charles Epps, Dr. Vivian Pinn, Dr. Louis Sullivan, and the late Dr. Judah Folkman. I would like to thank Dr. Lakshmi Nair, Dr. Yusuf Khan, and Dr. Kevin Lowe, former students and now scientist colleagues who moved a number of times to stay with me. I want to thank Dr. Nicholas Pepys. I, I want to thank the Academy presidents I have known, but particularly Dr. Victor Zhao, whose leadership of the National Academy of Medicine, I believe, has been masterful. And the late Dr. Charles Vest, who befriended me when I was on the faculty of MIT. Uh, my family is my rock, and I want to thank my wonderful wife, Cynthia, and all my children, all scientists, Cato, Michaela, and Victoria, who are here. I love you all. My late parents were key in my standing here before you today. My mother was a family medicine doctor, and my dad was a master carpenter. So looking down today, I'm sure they are pleased I became an orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> so, so. Being awarded the Walsh McDermott Medal, named after the father of the Institute of Medicine from the National Academy of Medicine today, along with being awarded the Simon Ramo Founders Award, the oldest honor of the National Academy of Engineering two weeks ago, collectively represent a singular humbling honor for me. And I am grateful to those on the awards committee for conferring these upon me. Finally, I teach my students to not confuse activity for accomplishment, that all activity must be meaningful and purposeful. My work with the National Academies of Medicine, Engineering, and Science, particularly work exploring my new field of regenerative engineering, to work redefining the next generation of clinicians and scientists, to work on issues impacting our nation's security, has been immensely rewarding and meaningful. And I am very, very grateful to the academies for, for providing me the opportunity to help shape our world's future in science in general and in medicine in particular. Thank you. Cato, Cato. Well done, and congratulations to all the awardees, and thank you, Jane. So uh, now for the final awards of the morning, the Cecil Awards, the NAM Cecil Awards, which recognize staff across the academies working in health and medicine. One of the things I continue to be impressed by uh, at the academy is the caliber of our staff. And I really have the pleasure of working with so many of them, and I'm truly, truly grateful. I would like to ask Mike McGuinness, the NAM Executive Officer, to come to stage and to present these awards. Michael? Thank you very much, Victor. It's always a particularly special pleasure uh, to announce the National Academy of Medicine Cecil Awards. Uh, the Cecil Awards recognize staff throughout the National Academies NAE, NAM, NAS, and NRC, uh, whose service has significantly contributed to progress uh, toward the NAM mission, improving health for all by advancing science, accelerating health equity, and providing independent, authoritative, and trusted advice nationally and globally. Uh, each October, the uh, NAM presents three Cecil Awards, uh, which are accompanied by $4,000, uh, a commemorative medal, and a certificate presented uh, by the NAM president. It's a pleasure to announce the honoree of the first Cecil Award, Meg McCoy, uh, Director of Membership and Governance uh, for the National Academy of Medicine, who is receiving the Sandra H. Matthews Cecil Award, which recognizes an administrative management, project, or research support staff member within the academies whose sustained support over the years has contributed importantly to activities advancing the NAM mission. In her role as the Director of Membership and Government Governance, Meg oversees the NAM's membership election, the council, and all of the standing committees of the academy. Do you get the impression that she has a pivotal position for everybody in this room? 
She works on a variety of critical and complex issues with the highest ethical standards and impeccable judgment, coupled with a genuine warmth and engaging leadership style. Please join me in congratulating Meg McCoy. Aaron Ballo, uh, Senior Program Officer, Health and Medicine Division of the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine, is receiving the Cecil Award for Individual Excellence. Uh, this award recognizes an activity director or research support staff person who has made substantial contributions to the development and implementation of reports and activities of exceptional quality and influence in advancing the NAM's mission. Aaron joined the academies in 2008 as a research assistant, rising to the position of senior program officer, an unusual trajectory, uh, in 2015. She's worked on a number of high-profile studies before serving as the study director for the Improving Diagnosis and Healthcare Study, part of the academy's Crossing the Quality Chasm Study. Aaron represents the model National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine staff person bright, inquisitive, dedicated, committed, innovative, and extremely hardworking. She's also a great mentor to the staff who work with her on the National Cancer Policy Forum. Please join me in congratulating Erin Ballow. The Cecil Award for Excellence of a Group or Team uh, goes to the team for the NAM's Action Collaborative on Clinician Wellbeing and Resilience. Charlie Alexander, Kira Capolucci, Ivory Clark, Laura Ayupa, Denning, uh, Rajbir Kaur, Heather Kreidler, Mark Messier, Cheryl Nass, Imani Rickerby, Tony Warden, and Mariana Zindel. This award recognizes a staff group or team within the academies that has made substantial contributions to the development and implementation of activities of exceptional quality, influence, and importance in advancing the NAM's mission. The clinician well-being team is a superb example in that respect. It's an example of what can be achieved with effective cross-academies collaboration. Uh, the team leverages strengths and resources of several major units within the academies, NAM, HMD, DBAS, even NAE, with expertise in healthcare, public health, science, systems engineering, human systems integration, and a broad range of experience in conducting Academy's work. This collaboration has set a precedent for effectively working across institutional units. Following the reorganization of the Institute of Medicine, it highlights the potential for creative activities and products as the National Academies undergo transformation. And stay tuned on Wednesday for the release of a consensus study that their work has spawned. Congratulations, team.
what a big team. <laughs> a great team. A 